Hello and welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. So now we can head over to the iOS project and we can work on bringing in Firestore. So let's go to the iOS project. So we'll expand packages and we need to do a couple things with packages. We're going to remove analytics because we need to drop its version. So we'll remove analytics and then we'll re-add 6041. So let's go to manage NuGet packages. And then we'll search for xamarin.firebase.ios and we'll look for analytics and we'll change 641 to 6041 and we'll click add package. We'll also want to install the core package so we'll search xamarin.firebase.ios and we're going to look for core and we're going to use 6101. We're also going to bring in xamarin.build.download and we can use the latest is fine. And now with our packages in order, we can bring in Cloud Firestore. So we'll search xamarin.firebase.ios.cloudfirestore. And this version we're going to drop to 1.4.2.2. So 1.4.2.2. And we can click Add Package. So that's all for package management. So we can collapse the packages folder. And then we'll open Services and we'll open Account Service. And we should get an error because we added the profile method to get user async to the Android, but we didn't add it to iOS, so we'll just use a quick fix. And then when we scroll down, we'll see our method to get user async. And so much the same way that we've done with the others, we'll just make a task completion source. So var TCS equals new task completion source, and this will be an authenticated user. And then below that, we'll just return tcs.task to give the shared project something to await. And now that we have that in between these two lines, we can use Firestore. So we can say firebase.cloudfirestore.firestore.shared instance. And then we can get collection just like we did on the Android project. And we can just call this users. And then we can get document from the collection. And this is going to return a document reference. And the next method we use is going to be get document as well, but it, it returns something else. So um, we can use get document and we need a document path. And so the document ID is the user's current Firebase auth ID or UID. So we can just say auth dot default instance dot current user dot UID. And then we can say get document again, but notice this one doesn't return a document reference. This one is from the document reference and will take in a completion source. So we can use a simple Lambda expression for this completion handler. And this will take in a document snapshot as well as an error. And then we can pass those into an anonymous method. Inside here, we can check to see if error does not equal null. And if error is not null, then something went wrong. So we can just stick to the little comment we've been using. Something went wrong. And then we can just uh, try to set the result. So try set result on the TCS. And we'll set uh, default authenticated user. After that, let's make sure we return. Otherwise, we got through it. So we don't have a error and so our snapshot should be okay and so we can just try to set the result to a new authenticated user so we can say tcs .set result, and this will be a new authenticated user and we can set some properties in here so the ID of the user will be the snapshot ID the first name will be snapshot dot get value and we need to provide an NS object so like NS string so we can say new ns string, and then we can use the key for first name. And then we'll want to use to string at the end of that. And so that'll put it into a C sharp string. And then we'll do the same for last name. And so this will return an authenticated user with the ID, as well as the two values from the snapshot, which are first name and last name. And then we can head over to the time clock page model, and we can just do that kind of sample user check just to make sure. So let's go right under the work items call and we'll just say var user equals await account service dot get user async and then we'll just check if user is equal to null and we'll put a breakpoint on that line and then we can run the app. With the app running we can sign in with either sign in method so I'll use the email sign in method and with our credentials for the 
fake user that we created in Firebase Authentication. We can click login. And that brings us to a breakpoint on the get user async. And so we'll just check error, which is null. So we can just press continue. And then it'll show us our user. And it looks like the authenticated user was not null. And we can see that it did retrieve the ID, the first name, and the last name. So that shows that our iOS app is also connected to Cloud Firestore. And that's where we'll end today's video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. This is Patrick from the Let's Create series, and we'll see you next time.